What's up guys, welcome back to Cars, Cost, and Technology. In today's video, we're gonna take a deep dive into the top must-have options for your new C8 Corvette. Now, whether that means you're picking up a used one or you're getting ready to spec out a brand new 2022 C8 Corvette with your dealership, either way, this is gonna be some really helpful information to help make sure you get the best out of your car and you know, going into it, what you can expect of these options. We're gonna be looking at some production data to see what options are really popular and what other owners are choosing so you have a good idea of what's already out there in the market. Then we're also gonna go over some of my personal feedback on most of these options since I have, at this point, thankfully had an opportunity to drive five different C8 Corvettes with different configurations. Want to pass along my experience on all five of those and give a as unbiased review as I possibly can on each of these options to help you make a better decision on whether or not it's important for your particular car. Now, uh, before we get started, I do want to point out that the 2022 uh, C8 Corvette price configurator and build tool on the Chevrolet website is live. So I'm going to be referencing that throughout the video today. We'll have a link down below if you want to check that out after the video. Uh, go and spec out your own C8 Corvette where you can see some of the 2022 pricing, which I'm going to have in this video as well, and check out some of the options. But uh, anyways, glad to see that's up and uh, that 2022 production is getting going. Really cool to see we're moving on to this, you know, actually the third model year production for the C8 Corvette. Uh, seems like time really flies because I remember when this thing was just getting going on the first model year. But anyway, guys, let's go ahead and talk about some of these options. So I want to point out the obvious uh, to get things started. If you're going to buy a C8 Corvette, the first thing you need to decide is, am I going with coupe or convertible? Um, I do have a great video talking about the benefits of the convertible, sort of my comparison, my thoughts on going with coupe or convertible. I will say at this point, from a data perspective, the coupe is the more popular variant, but the convertible is definitely gaining traction. Uh, so check out that full video. I don't want to bore you guys when you're looking strictly for options information, but of course you want to make sure you fully understand the benefits of each variant. Now, as far as once you decide coupe or convertible, then you need to look into the trim level you're going to be going with and you got 1LT, 2LT and 3LT. My typical recommendation is going to be 2LT and once again I do have a full dedicated video just strictly talking about going with 2LT so I'm not going to talk about that too much in depth but uh, obviously if price is not a, an issue you can go with 3LT for a little more luxurious uh, interior but as you can see here on this uh, information all the features or options, technology packages, things like that are included in the 2LT. It's just the difference of, again, the uh, how luxurious the interior is, some of the trimming, uh, stitching, different materials used, things like that. So 2LT is a great value. Uh, now, I will say at, at this point in time for the 2021 model year, the 2LT did happen to be the most popular option at 44% of the total production run. Uh, the biggest thing that I would point out if you are leaning towards 1LT, and for everyone, they're going to be a little bit different based on how they're going to be driving the car, um, their personal preference and, and their experience, their area even. Uh, if you're going to be living in an area with a lot of traffic, you're going to be daily driving the car. I would suggest that you do go with one of the uh, trim levels or uh, models that comes with the rear camera mirror, not necessarily a backup camera, but the camera mirror that's mounted on the roof line. I've talked about this in multiple other videos. I go into it very in depth in the 2LT video. But if you go with the 1LT coupe, that is the only variant that does not come with the rear camera mirror. And because of the mid-engine design of this car, there are some major blind spots. Again, if you happen to live in an area where there's not a whole lot of traffic, you're only going to be taking the car on weekends. No big deal. Probably not going to be an issue for you at all. If you do plan on daily driving the car, driving it in traffic, going downtown, things like that, you're probably going to want better visibility. And in that case, I would strongly recommend the convertible 1LT, the 2LT of both variants and 3LT of both variants come standard with this rear camera mirror. Uh, it's very helpful in determining where you're at, who's behind you, beside you, things like that. I did find that the blind spots were a little hard to navigate, especially if you don't have that rear camera mirror turned on. As far as production data goes, you can see for the 2020 to 2021 model years, uh, you can see only 12% of the total C8 Corvettes were produced without this mirror. And that is, again, just the 1LT coupes. So very few overall C8 Corvettes do not have this feature. Uh, and again, for some people, not going to be an issue at all. I'd love to hear from owners who do have a 1LT coupe, what your experience is. I'm just passing along my personal experience was that it was pretty difficult to see. And from a safety perspective, I could see if you're going to be driving in traffic a lot, you're going to want that rear camera mirror uh, to, to help you out in visibility. Now, moving on to the next really popular package, which everyone's sort of wondering, I'm sure, is the Z51 performance package. A lot of reviews uh, that I've watched um, on YouTube and car reviews that I've read on uh, different mag major magazines and such, they almost lead you to believe that the Z51 package is a no-brainer. And I want to tread carefully here. 
I do believe that Z51 Performance Package is a great package. It's a phenomenal value. If you're going to be tracking your car, if you're really looking for the performance, this is a, an exceptional value here. As the price has gone up, it's still a good value uh, for the 2022 model year at $6,345. It does include you know, all the necessary things to track your C8 Corvette, and it actually is actually required for warranty re reasons if you're going to be tracking your car. Now, if you're not, I do want to point out a viable alternative that you may enjoy, save some money, and and actually get some benefits by not going the Z51 package. But by all means, you know, look at the production data here. You can see that for 2020 and for 2021, very, very high take rate on the Z51 performance package. 76% in 2020, 69% in 2021. So the number speaks for itself. This is a popular option. And again, by no means am I trying to discourage people from going with it. Um, just wanted to sort of give shed some light on the fact that not all owners need to feel compelled to get this to think their car is going to perform well. If you wanted a nice alternative to Z51 and maybe allocate some of that money uh, to some other options you're interested in, what I would suggest is the performance exhaust option. Um, that's only about $1,200, and you can see as a standalone option, it is included in the Z51 performance package, but as a standalone option, you're looking at almost a 90% take rate two years in a row on this feature. Uh, it's going to make the car sound better, add some extra horsepower, give you a wider range of control over the exhaust note. Very nice feature. Then if you want to have that similar look as far as front splitter and rear spoiler, the new rear uh, low profile rear spoiler that's available for the 2022 model year with the new front splitter or with existing front splitter, I should say, is only $595. Great value on that package. You could get the two of these and your car would sound like look like and actually have the same horsepower as a z51 car but it'd be four thousand five hundred fifty five dollar savings so again just pointing out a viable alternative for those that maybe aren't going to be tracking their car and are a little bit confused on whether or not they actually need the z51 performance package some other trade-offs that you're going to get by going this route if you do plan on daily driving the car or driving it all year round um, you're going to get the all-season tires versus more of a summer only compound that's going to be helpful to make the car a little more versatile the biggest thing for me that I never realized when I opted for the Z51 package on my car, which I didn't actually track it, I could have absolutely opted to go base, is that the rotors, brake rotors, are, I'm not going to try to pronounce the name, but F and C coded on the base model, and they are not coded on the Z51 package. That is for uh, heat reasons. I believe heat dispersion is better uh, without F and C coding, but this coding does help with corrosion. And what I noticed is that without this coding, if you park in the rain or if you're driving in the rain when you're washing the car, the rotors get rusted extremely quickly. Uh, not that big of a deal because you can, of course, drive off and the rust comes right off, uh, except for the areas that the pads don't touch. But it just it, it was just sort of hard to look at. I hated seeing the rust all over. It looked like the car had been sitting for weeks after I would just wash it in the driveway. So I wasn't really a big fan of that, me personally. Um, I do believe that I would have been better suited to go with the base model with performance exhaust and maybe an aero kit. Uh, and again, this is just me personally, not necessarily for all owners. want to pass this information along for anyone who's getting ready to buy so they have a fully informed decision here. And you also are going to get a little bit softer suspension, but between the uh, you know same horsepower with the performance exhaust, the all-season tires, get those corrosion-coated rotors if you go with the base model, maybe help it make it a little bit easier to park outside, daily drive it in the rain, things like that. A little bit softer suspension. Um, at least consider your options there. Again, by no means am I trying to steer majority away from Z51, but the fact that 70, almost 70 to 70 plus percent are going with Z51, I do believe there are some owners that maybe misunderstand the extreme performance of this car without it. Uh, the zero to 60 times and quarter mile times are very, very similar, uh, almost identical actually in real world. And you actually get a faster top speed without Z51. So again, just trying to help save you guys some money. That uh, $4,555 savings could go a long way in your interior uh, for some of the other things that we're going to talk about and help get the most out of your car versus just having performance options that you never actually end up using. Now, the next thing that I want to talk about goes alongside with the Z51 performance package and used to actually be a part of that package or the Z51 is required for it. And that's the mag ride or magnetic selective ride control. Now, this is a feature that I did go with on my personal C8 Corvette, and I have driven the car with and without this option. I will say when I drove at the Ron Phillips Performance Driving School, MagRide was a must-have, uh, absolutely helps with the performance traction management, all the different modes and options you have available to you to get the most out of suspension on the track. Uh, if you plan on tracking your car, again, get Z51, go with MagRide. If you're going to be riding around town, though, just kind of cruising with the car, going on road trips, things like that, I actually preferred 
the around town feel without Magride. And I know that sounds crazy because in theory, Magride should give a more comfortable ride on and off the track, but I'm just relaying my experience. Unfortunately, when I drove somebody's, the C8 Corvette convertible, it did not have Magride. And I actually liked the suspension feel a little bit better on that car than I did on my personal C8 Corvette, at least around my local roads here in town. Again, just passing along that feedback, you can see from a production perspective, it is a very popular option with over 54% um, both 20, or excuse me, 54% in 2020 and in 2021. So again, the numbers speak for, its, for themselves. This is a great option. You're not going to be upset if you have it, but if you're wondering if it's worth the almost $2,000, in my personal experience, I do not believe it was for me in my area and how I was driving the car. Uh, now moving on to another suspension related option, which gets a lot of attention is the front lift. Now for me, this is um, one that I can confidently recommend, even though the price has continually gone up for the 2022 model year, you're looking at $2,260. But the front lift is gonna give you a lot of peace of mind when driving around, whether you're pulling into parking lots, driveways, speed bumps, uh, anytime you're taking this car to an unfamiliar area, especially in the dark, if you can't see, scraping is going to be a real concern. Uh, if you've invested in one of the aero kits or even Z51 package with a front splitter on there, you're not going to want to constantly worry about scrubbing that front end. So this is going to make the car a lot more uh, usable on a daily basis. And even though it has gone up in price, I do believe this is still a great value. You do have to go with 2LT or above to have access to this option. So if you are already pretty set on 1LT, of course, this isn't going to be an option for you, but uh, 2LT and above, I would absolutely recommend going with the front lift. Very convenient. And the fact that it remembers the locations for you, that was helpful for me when pulling into my driveway. Uh, as far as production numbers go, you can see that it is a very popular option with 2020 having 58.4% and 2021, uh, 61%. You can see that there are a majority of owners opting for this option for good reason. Very nice feature to have. And I think that it's well worth the money. Uh, now, when we talked about maybe saving some money elsewhere, looking at some viable alternatives, I want to talk a little bit about interior options because that was one of the biggest areas that I feel like I sort of missed the boat on my C8 Corvette is I did go with Z51. I did go with Magride. I did go with the front lift. I went with basically every mechanical option that I could select for performance or function features, but I do feel like I maybe skipped out on some really nice interior options that would have made driving the car just feel a little more special, make the interior a nicer place for me to drive in. So I wanna make sure that I pass along that experience and my feedback to new owners so they have a better understanding when they're going to select their options. So when we're looking at seats here, this is a big factor in the comfort of the car. For me, I went with the GT1 seat and I've driven in multiple different C8s with GT1 seats. I've also driven in one with GT2 and then drove on the track with the competition seats. As you can see by the data here, the GT2 is the, definitely the most popular seat and that's for good reason. Not only does this seat look better, it's got some nice carbon fiber accent pieces, but it's also a very comfortable seat. I would strongly recommend um, the GT2 seat. Obviously, if you're going with 3LT, you're getting that anyway, so this is a no-brainer. But if you're going with 2LT, you have the option of uh, about $1,500 to upgrade to GT2. I would make that suggestion, and you get a nice little accent of carbon fiber in there, nicer overall look, and a little bit better comfort. Uh, so again, that, that's a strong recommendation there. Good place to spend a few of those dollars that you could possibly save elsewhere on the uh, mechanical features that, that maybe don't fit your needs or aren't needed for you. Now, I also want to talk about interior color options. Not necessarily because this is a must-have option. This really boils down to personal preference, um, more of the appearance of the interior. But again, going back to my personal car, I could have went with the Adrenaline Red interior for uh, very little extra money. I would have went with two-tone seats and you know gone GT2 and such. But I, I went with Jet Black because I felt like it was the safest bet. It was the easiest route to go with without uh, having to sort of risk it being kind of a, a not obnoxious or um, just not really liking the red, getting sick of the red. The first time that I sat in an interior with Adrenaline Red, I immediately regretted that I didn't do that on my C8 Corvette, and I went with Jet Black. Uh, again, there are going to be owners, of course, who prefer all Jet Black, maybe with the red stitching or red seat belts. Um, just passing along that if you are on the fence and you're considering maybe one of the colored options like Adrenaline Red, Natural, Sky Cool Gray, Twilight, Tension Blue, uh, definitely try the best you can to go see one in person. I know Jet Black seems like it's going to be the easiest and safest route. Uh, for me, though, I absolutely wish I would have went with Adrenaline Red when I had a chance to drive uh, a car with the Adrenaline Red interior at the Ron Phillips Performance Driving School. Absolutely love that interior. It looked phenomenal. Um, for my next uh, C8 
whatever it may be, Stingray, Z06, I, I'm not sure at this point. I am absolutely interested in one of the two-tone interiors, uh, Adrenaline Red or one of the other ones, depending on the color combination. Uh, so just want to pass that along. You can see by our production numbers uh, in terms of popularity, Jet Black is, of course, most popular here. And I think, again, that may come back to it. It's one of the safer colors. You know, you can't really go wrong with that. So you're probably not going to regret it in terms of um, you don't like the look of the interior. But I think you'd be surprised if you saw one of the other colored options in person, how nice it can be and how much more special it can make the interior of the car feel. But anyway, guys, that is the major information that I wanted to cover. I hope that you found some of that information helpful in your process of deciding what options you're going to need. Uh, again, I know I shared a lot of personal opinions in here. I would love to hear the opinions of some other CA owners who, whether you disagree with me or agree with me, I think it's helpful to share some feedback for those who are trying to shop for a C8 Corvette, better understand what's going to be good for them based on some feedback they can get from those who have already had a chance to drive and own this car. But thanks so much for watching, guys. Uh, give the video a like if you did enjoy it. Share it with anyone who may be also in the shopping process or with your Corvette club. Uh, but uh, thanks again, guys. We'll talk to you next time. Look forward to discussing your feedback in the comments below. Have a great day.